what is locality sensitive hashing and where is it used? Let's see. Locality sensitive hashing is the process of assigning a hash to items such that similar items end up with the same hash or go into the same bucket with high probability and dissimilar items end up going into the same bucket or have the same hash with low probability. In other words, dissimilar items should have a different hash or should end up in different buckets. Where is locality sensitive hashing used? What are some applications of LSH? One of the most popular applications of LSH is nearest neighbor search or uh, it can be used to make KNN, K nearest neighbors more efficient. So think of uh, a situation where you're using a music app, you're listening to a song and you want to see similar songs recommended to you. Now there could be millions of songs in the database. How do you compare the song that you're listening to with every other song in the database? It could be very inefficient to go over all these songs. So LSH could be an efficient way of finding the nearest neighbor songs in order to recommend the right songs. So there could be other applications of LSH uh, like clustering, dimensionality reduction, digital uh, fingerprinting, duplicate detection, and really many others. And once we actually talk about how LSH works, you will uh, get a sense of how they're used for all these applications as well. There are several algorithms for implementing LSH. Some of the popular ones are the minhash algorithm and the simhash algorithm, which is based on random projections. There are others like the TLSH, which is used for digital forensics uh, and security. Uh, there is uh, nil simsa, which is mostly for anti-spam, and there are like a bunch of others, several of which are also open sourced. But we will look at the random projections technique today. We will now look at the random projections technique for locality sensitive hashing. So again, let us recall that what we want to do is to find a hash or a bucket for each point such that similar points have the same hash or end up in the same bucket and dissimilar points end up in different buckets or have different hashes. So now let's say that we have a bunch of points. So the random projections technique involves generating a set of random hyperplanes. So first suppose I generate this hyperplane here. Let's call it H1. And this hyperplane helps us find the first bit in the hash. So let's say everything to the left of this hyperplane is zero and to the right of the hyperplane is one. So all these points here, if we call them A, B and C, these points will get zero as the first digit. All right. Uh, now suppose we have another uh, hyperplane. So I will generate a hyperplane like this and call this, again, this is a random hyperplane, H2. And this side is zero, this side is one. So now A and B will have the first digit as zero. So this is A, let's say this is B, and this is C. So uh, the first digit was, uh, with respect to H1, was zero for all of them but only A and B have a zero with respect to the second digit while C will have a one because it is on the uh, one side of the hyperplane H2. And we can continue doing this until we do like K hyperplanes. Now let us look at the algorithm. So the algorithm proceeds like this. First, we want to randomly generate K hyperplanes, capital K hyperplanes. Now, for each data point P, for each hyperplane, K equals one to K, the Kth bit of the hash code for P is zero if P dot HK is less than zero, which means it is lying to one side of the hyperplane versus it is one if P dot HK is greater than zero, which is lying to the other side of the hyperplane as we have seen here and this is just the dot product so this is how we generate a hash code now note that our goal is to maximize the probability that points that are close by in the actual space end up in the same bucket or have the same hash so it's possible that we end up 
creating a hyperplane that actually goes between these points that are close by and uh, puts them in different buckets. So to minimize the possibility of similar points going to different buckets, what we end up doing is we actually repeat this whole process L times. So capital L times we generate K hyperplanes. So we once again generate K hyperplanes and then come up with another hash value for each of the points and then we do that again. So we have capital L different hash codes for each point and the length of each hash code will be capital K. So now suppose we have a new point or suppose we take a particular point P and we want to find the nearest neighbors or uh, the closest points, similar points. What we end up doing is we compare P, so we find the hash uh, value for P and then we look at other points with the same hash value or other points in the same bucket to find duplicates or nearest neighbors. And when we look at other points in the same bucket, we have, since we have L different tables, we might have L different uh, times we need to look for uh, other points. So let's look at this again with an example. In this example, I have these points A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So I first generate three hyperplanes in the first uh, set, first iteration, repetition. So I first generated H1 here. And as we see, both A, B, C lie on the zero side of H1. Then I have another hyperplane, H2 here. And now we see that A and B lie on the zero side of H2, but C lies on the one side of H2. And then we have another hyperplane H3 here, where both uh, all three of A, B, C lie on the same side of H3, which is the zero side of H3. So what we see here is A, B have a hash code of 0, 0, 0, because they lie on zero side of all these three hyperplanes. But if you take C, it lies on the one side of H2. It lies on zero side of H1 and H3. So we have... 0, 1, 0 for C. So even though A, B, C are actually close by, they actually ended up in different buckets because of the way this particular random hyperplane H2 was selected. Now, how do we minimize the probability of similar items going into different buckets? So we have another uh, repetition where we again generate three different hyperplanes. So this is uh, the second repetition L equals 2 where we once again generated three hyperplanes. This time, uh, A, B, and C are on the same side with respect to all the three hyperplanes. And A, B, and C ended up with 0, 0, 0. So uh, this minimizes the probability that similar items go into different buckets because at least in one of these buckets, they will actually end up together. So if we are given a new data point, what we end up doing is we will find the hash for that data point. Suppose the hash turns out to be 0, 0, 0 for the new data point. How do we find the nearest neighbors? We look in each table. So we compute hash with table 1. So that's 0, 0, 0. Then we compute and the nearest points are A and B. Then we compute hash with table 2. And the ta that can be something else. It need not be 0, 0, 0. But in this particular case, it is 0, 0, 0. And we find three points here, A, B, and C. And similarly, with table 3, we get a different list. We might get A, B, C, and D. Right. So now we take this list of all the points which have the same hash in any of the tables and we look at which points are similar by directly computing the dot product with them and pick the most similar points. So instead of looking at all the points, which could be like, you know, millions of points in your data set, you're ending up looking at only those points which have the same hash value in at least one of the tables. Now, why is this more efficient? Let's see. If we want to do it the naive way. So suppose we have capital N data points and each data point has D dimensions. And suppose we are talking about K hyperplanes. In this example, small example that we had here, K was 3. And suppose we are talking about L repetitions. So here uh, we have drawn three tables, but uh, it could be like, you know, a higher number. Suppose we had L repetitions. Now, uh, in the naive case, how would you actually find a nearest neighbor? You would actually go and look at all the capital N points, which could be like really high. 
So for each point, you would actually compute the dot product. So in the naive way, you end up with capital N into D computations, where D is the dimension and capital N is the number of points. And D is coming because of the complexity of finding dot product, which will involve each dimension. So now what if you're doing locality sensitive hashing? So the first thing you do for locality sensitive hashing is find the hash or the bucket for the new point hash or the bucket for the new point and the complexity of this is d for each dimension into k because there are k hyperplanes so you need to do a dot product with each hyperplane and see which side it lies so d into k once you find the hash or the bucket you want to go and compare that point with every other point in that bucket. So now how many points can be in that bucket? Let's say on an average, the number of points in that bucket is total number of points divided by total number of uh, possible buckets, right? So the number of, if you have K hyperplanes, there could be two to the power K partitions of space, which means there could be two to the power K buckets. So let's say the average number of points in a bucket is the total number of points by the number of buckets, which is capital N by 2 power K. Now, once you know this, the comparison cost within a bucket is D times this, because you want to take the dot product with each other point in the bucket and see which are similar. So it's D into N by 2 power K. So the total cost of finding the nearest neighbor would be first DK to find which bucket and D into capital N by 2 power K in order to find nearest points within the bucket. Now we want to multiply this whole thing by L because of L iterations. So this is uh, because of repetitions. Okay, so now uh, what if you take a small value of K? If you take a small value of k, this term is low, but then this term could actually blow up. Because 2 power k is small, n by 2 power k is large, which means a lot of items can end up in the same bucket if you take a very small k. Right? So how do you choose a k? So k is not really a constant, but now suppose we choose k as something close to log n to the base 2. What would happen now? So we would end up with L into D into K, which is log N to the base 2 plus D into N by 2 power K would just be 1 because K is log N to the base 2, right? So this is equivalent to L into D into log N. So earlier you had capital N into D and now you have roughly log of capital N into D multiplied by some constant L. And this could be much more efficient than what you saw earlier. Now, if you want to implement LSH for your nearest neighbor search, it is readily available in scikit-learn. You can actually look at uh, sklearn neighbors.lsh forest and you can use it just like your nearest neighbors uh, algorithm. And uh, once again, it's not very hard to implement it if you want to use it outside the scope of nearest neighbors. Uh, it's not very hard to code up. So what we looked at today was locality sensitive hashing, which is a technique to find similar items such that uh, it's a way of hashing such that similar items end up with the same hash with high probability and dissimilar items end up with a different hash or end up in a different bucket with high probability. Thank you.